guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Don't Touch My Nuts. It plays 3-6 to six players, it takes about 30-45 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 18 and up. And in the game Don't Touch My Nuts, you're going to be having a little squirrely fun where you'll be gathering a nut sack one of these guys here, and you'll be placing nuts in them. You'll be getting a certain amount of nuts to place into your sack here, and you're going to try and store them and keep them as long as you possibly can. If you lose all your nuts, you're going to be removed from the game, and your objective is not only to keep your nuts, but to remove the nuts of your opponents from their sack. You'll be using squirrel cards and a plethora of other unique things uh, to destroy the nuts in the player's sacks, as well as, of course, utilizing defenses like this squirrel trap here to prevent other players from playing cards cards on you. On your turn, you'll get an option to play an action, whether it be a defense card or an attack card, and of course the secret hidden turtle card, uh, to either protect yourself, attack an opponent, or secretly slide in an extra nut, so to speak, into your sack. And the play will go on like that. You'll be playing cards down, attempting to gather as much attack as you possibly can and place it onto your opponent. They'll have to try and deal with it if they can, and if not, they'll lose nuts from their sack. If they lose all their nuts, they're out of the game, and play will go on until you are the last last person remaining with nuts in your sack. And if you are, you'll be the winner of the game. That's how you play. I'll show you what comes with the game and then I'll give you my review right now. So here are the components for Don't Touch My Nuts. And what you're going to be getting in the game is nut sacks and cards, as well as, of course, this wonderful handy dandy rule book. To begin the game, every single player is going to get eight acorn cards. They're all the same and you're just going to go ahead and make a separate deck for them and then take eight from them and place eight into your sack. And every player will get eight as well, so I'll go ahead and add a dummy player here and put eight into theirs as well. Uh, every player is also going to be getting seven cards. These cards range from defense cards to attack cards to stealth cards. Uh, these cards will go into your hand. For every player who is not playing the game, you can go ahead and take the extra sacks and remove them from the game so you will not be needing them. Now, this game typically requires three players, but for learning purposes, two Two will go just fine. So I'll go ahead and set these guys out, just like I were playing a two-player game. So that's how it would look. Uh, go ahead and also make sure the acorns are set in a separate area, and of course the deck that you drew the seven cards from, make sure that was pre-shuffled. Uh, the barricade cards, place them in the areas next to the acorns, and they're going to have wooden and metal ones. And then go ahead and choose a player to begin by simply doing the rock, paper, scissors uh, <laughs> beginning strategy. After you've done that, the player who wins will go ahead and start by taking one action. Now, there are multiple actions that you can take on your turn. One action you can take is to attack a player. You'll go ahead and play a card from your hand that has an attack base on it, uh, and that will attack a specific player of your choosing. So this player will play this card and attack this player over here. And the attack is based on the number at the bottom right, and based on that attack, if it goes through, we'll take that many acorns from that player's specific sack. So this is going to be two damage to this player here. This player has no defenses, so they will simply lose two acorns from their sack, which is basically their HP and uh, put it into the pile over here. Uh, this card will go ahead and get discarded, and then this player's turn will be done. They performed their action, they discarded their action. Uh, at the end of their turn, they can choose one card they may or may not want from their hand, and they can go ahead and uh, discard that card, uh, which will let you get more cards into your hand at the beginning of your next turn. And play will then pass. This player here will now go ahead and take another action, which is play a defense card. Uh, I'll play a card face down in front of me, uh, basically protecting my nut sack from other players onslaughts or attacks. And then of course I can choose to go ahead and discard a card. Maybe I'll get rid of this plebeian scroll and pass turn. It'll go to the next player. And now this player will get a draw to their max hand limit, which is going to be seven cards. They'll draw the two cards, one from the discarded card and one from the card that was played as an action. Uh, here is a turtle card, which is a bluff card. You can actually sneak this into your sack and it doesn't count as an action. You can do it anytime you want as long as nobody notices and that will give you one extra HP if you do it right. Uh, but this player can go ahead and play another attack card. Now, there's also going to be equipment. So when you play a Plebeian Squirrel, and you have an equipment that can attach to it, you can add attack to that squirrel. In this case, it'll be two plus one, which is three. And this player can, if they have a defense card, flip it over and destroy, destroy the squirrel, as long as it has the same type. Destroy a land squirrel. This is a land-based squirrel. These cards will go away. This trap will be triggered and be removed. And then this player can go ahead and discard a card from their hand if they want to. 
and pass their turn. The next player will get a chance to go, thusly drawing cards to maximize their hand size, and they'll get to take another action. Uh, another action is you can go ahead and play a barricade in front of yourself, which protects you against land-based attacks, but can be destroyed. And the last thing that you can do is you can go ahead and play a stealth card, which are these guys here. They're basically actions that let you do certain things, like look at an opponent's sack or a defense card. If you look in their sack and they have a turtle in it, you can remove it. And if you look at a defense card, you'll know what type of defense it is before you play your next attack. And that's pretty much how the game goes. It goes back and forth. Players are attacking each other, trying to remove nuts from their sacks. If you have no nuts remaining in your sack, meaning that a player has removed all or your last nut from your sack and you're out, oh no, you're out of the game. If there is only one player remaining by that point, then that player will win the game. Don't touch my nuts. Uh, that's basically how the game works. Let's come up and talk about it. So what do I think about this nutty card game? Well, first of all, to take that game, you'll be gathering specific cards in your hand, utilizing them to attack your opponents, protecting yourself with defense cards, and utilizing them to keep the nuts in your sack in your sack, as opposed to the attack where you'll be trying to remove them from your opponents. You're gonna get one action on your turn. Typically it'll either be a defense card or an attack card. And then the, sometimes you'll be placing a secret turtle into one of your sacks or utilizing it as a fake defense card, but mainly it's just attack, defend. Uh, I would actually prefer if they had more than one action. So instead of just pick, taking one of those, maybe one of each, a defense and an attack, or uh, you get the option of choosing either or. Uh, in the game, you're also going to be ending when everybody else's nut sacks are empty or have run dry, and you are remaining, <laughs> you've remained the last person with nuts in your sack. And if that's the case, you win. Uh, what would be actually, in my opinion, a little cooler, and maybe a house variant, I should say, is if you could have more actions, and also uh, when you take nuts from players and remove them, instead you'll put them into your sack. And the game, instead of ending when you're the last person to have nuts, when one player loses all of their nuts, the game will end and whoever has the most in their sack is the winner. Uh, because basically what happens is when you get removed from the game, you're out and you have to kind of sit out, uh, which is fine for Take That Game. It's not extremely long, but a way to prevent that player manipulate or player elimination aspect of the game, making it so that players will play until one person is out and thusly allowing them to collect nuts could be a cool, unique little mechanic. Uh, however, this game is pretty stylized, classical Take That card game with a unique little aspect of utilizing your sack with the uh, nuts in them. Now nuts in general are just nuts, they're called acorns, and you store them in your sack. There's nothing really special about them other than they're basically your HP, and your HP is hidden, which is a nice little twist having to try and remember how many players have what nuts in their sack, meaning that when you're playing a game at three players compared to six, six is always better because there's going to be more thought into who you attack based on how many nuts you think are in their sack. That in addition to the fact that there's the turtle that allows you to basically slide that into your your sack giving you an extra health if nobody notices however if they do you can be caught and you'll lose health so you have to be very careful about that a nice little twist and the sack is an excellent aspect to a take that card game i haven't seen before where in general you'll just get lives in one of those games this one here has kind of like a hidden life mechanic which is super cool but i'd like to see as well more nuts with unique nut uh, mechanics or actions that will do different things this nut specifically is worth two hp uh, this nut if it gets attacked and it gets removed by you specifically specifically, maybe you'll lose a defense. Something like that would be kind of cool because a lot of the cards are basically gonna be nuts and it'd be cool to see them, you know, added some unique new aspects to them. There's also the barricade cards. Uh, there's the wooden one as well as the metal one. And these guys here will prevent attacks uh, from hitting you and they'll have to be removed in order for that to happen. Uh, gathering these is a vital aspect to the game as well because it prevents people from wanting to bother to attack you knowing they're going to lose their action by doing so in which case uh, defenses are actually very vital in this game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is mainly going to be for kids and families. This is something that's going to be relatively easy to pick up and very easy to learn. The rules are basically written here on this piece of paper here. It's straightforward, taking me about five minutes to understand how to play and about 30 minutes to play the game. Of course, with more players, there comes a longer amount of time. Uh, but regardless, it's really straightforward, which is nice. Now, it has a little innuendo of nuts, but in general, it's, it's pretty cute. Is it going to be an 18 plus game? Uh, nothing that I see as far as in the, the cards go or any of the thematic elements of the game are necessarily going to be... Uh 
you know, spicy, I should say, I guess, in any way. So realistically, it's just you think your kids can handle nuts and sack being put together and taking nuts from sacks. There's going to be a lot of nut sack jokes basically in this game. But uh, otherwise, you're going to be pretty much on the safe side with this one here. Um, if you don't mind the take that aspect of the game where you're specifically targeting a player, removing their HP, it's a little bit aggressive. You can be removed by player elimination. And the fact that it's very simple and very straightforward, this is one I would suggest taking a look at. It's basically got high quality components. These sacks are really, really nice. These guys here are very nice and thick and they come with six of them in the game, which is um, really nice. Uh, all the cards are really easy to read and understand. The cards are nice and thick as well. This is what I'm guessing to be a fully complete uh, game. And all the artwork is, is cute as well. If you don't mind the little cute flying squirrels and whatnot, this is something that I would recommend taking a look at for your family, for friends. It'd probably be a nice little gift or a joke or a gag gift although it's not really a gag necessarily, but the gag and the theme and, and nature of the game. But anyway, if you're interested in taking a look at the game, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description. I had a lot of fun with this one here, but of course I think it could use some house rules to make the game a little more interesting for those of you who want a more advanced game. But if you're just picking this up for kids, people that are younger who haven't played a lot of Take That games, then uh, the, the, the Nutsack game is one I would strongly suggest taking a look at down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game don't touch my nuts. If you're interested, like I said, link down below in the description. Also go ahead and like this video, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit that notification button so you can see more of our videos. We put out every day video reviews for games just like this one. And uh, we also play them on our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can watch us play games like this one and many others on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll be doing one actually tonight. So if you're watching this video and you want to watch us play a game, I think we're going to be playing the game um, Fulcrum, Planet Fulcrum. So if you're interested, take, take a look at that as well. Uh, our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. New blogs coming out weekly. You'll also go ahead and be able to check out something really cool, which is Moonshell. It's a game my wife made. It is funded on Kickstarter. We'll have the pledge manager out shortly for you guys, and I'll have a link soon in one of our upcoming videos. And of course, you can also help us out on Patreon for one buck a month. That helps us out and get out more games and start doing giveaways once again. Now that the dust has settled for our campaign, we can start focusing more on our live streams again. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to protecting my nuts from you next time. Stay out of my nuts.